Let's talk about gym etiquette and the best ways to behave on and off the mats. Let's start at the feet and work our way up. First and foremost, shoes and socks. Usually it's going to be a good idea to wear some sort of slide or croc or sandals. Socks are sort of up to you, but for the most part you want something you can slide on and off super easy because you never, ever, ever, ever want to wear shoes on the mat, even if there's no signs, don't even bother, no shoes on the mat. If you're going to step on the mat, a lot of gyms will have a place to clean your feet off. If they don't, well, just make sure you clean beforehand. Defense wipes will work or just, you know, taking a shower. Be clean before you step on the mat. And if you have slides, you can take them off right then and there. If you have tennis shoes, well, just undo your tennis shoes right beside the mat and then step right on. Do not ever go in the bathroom with shoes off. Slides are easy. It's super nice. If you have tennis shoes and you're going to the bathroom, well, put those boys back on. Don't step in there barefoot. You're going to step on the mat with your bare feet. If you step on the bathroom floor bare feet, it's like a really quick transfer. And if someone's face is going to be in the mat, you don't want their face on that bathroom floor grodiness. It's not cool. So what are you going to do before class? Are you going to hang out? Are you going to stretch? Are you going to stand around looking awkward? All of those are right answers, but it's up to you. My advice would be to get there a little bit earlier so you have some time to warm up. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what you do to warm up as long as you get your body moving a little bit and you stretch out. If you don't know anyone there, now would be a good time to strike up some conversations. Oftentimes people, when they come to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu academies, they feel a little alone. They feel like they don't know anybody and no one's really talking to them. The reason for that is new people often drop out. So if you see a lot of people come in and a lot of people leave, it's not always easy to go out there and make an effort to make be the first one to say hi. Now, if it's a welcoming gym, I think the upper belt should do that. But you as a white belt feel totally, you should feel totally okay going up to an upper belt, asking them some questions, starting a conversation, generally just, you know, getting to know them. And if all else fails, it's a jiu-jitsu gym. I'm willing to bet someone will do a warm-up roll with you. Quick side note about warm-up rolls. In my opinion, there's a difference between a flow roll and a warm-up roll and a regular roll. A flow roll is a roll in which no submissions are going to be applied to completion. And generally, you're going to give up positions um, with the goal of trying to have as much movement as possible. A warm-up roll, in my opinion, is just a roll in which you're getting warmed up. Now, you can get as hard or as light as you want, but... Your, my goal is to try to ramp my heart rate up. My partner's goal can be whatever they want. If it's a white belt, sometimes they go crazy. Sometimes they go really light. But the goal of a warm-up roll is just to slowly ramp up your heart rate. Submissions, it's whatever. Just, you know, have fun, play some jiu-jitsu. Communicate this with your partner beforehand. And if you're just rolling, well, you're just rolling. So go for it. So the other thing when it comes to etiquette, the jiu-jitsu handshake, this should be done anytime you're about to do a live round. You slap your hand, you bump your fist, in my opinion, it's best to never assume that the round is over until you're completely done and it's obvious. Once you slap your hand and bump your fist, you should be alert, you should be ready. You should know that your partner is going to try to do some takedowns or submissions or other jujitsu moves on you, so be ready for that. Don't assume that it's over until you both realize it's done. Maybe you have another slap bump, maybe you say good roll. You communicate that it's over. You know, you don't want to run into the situation where one person thinks it's done and they turn their back and the other person jumps on and, you know, chokes them out. That's not cool. So make sure you know when you start and when you end your sparring sessions. Some etiquette rules about asking upper belts to roll. In my opinion, it's kind of weird if your gym has like enforced status for upper belts. Like if you're a lower belt, you should be allowed to ask an upper belt to roll. If you're an upper belt, you should be able to ask a lower belt to roll. You should just be able to ask anyone if they want to roll. And now they should be able to say no and it be no problem, but you should at least be able to ask. So I wouldn't worry too much about that unless there's explicit statements beforehand by the coach that we have weird rules about partnering up. Maybe someone's doing a specific kind of training regimen for a competition or something, so they're rolling with specific partners. You never know, but in my opinion, if you're polite about it, just ask, and if they say no, no big deal. Drilling. Etiquette for drilling. You're there to learn. You are not there to try to spar. You are there to get as many good reps in as you can for both you and your partner. So don't resist, but also don't be a limp noodle. You want to find that happy medium where you're giving realistic reactions and you're letting your partner practice a perfectly timed move. 
And when you do that for them, they're going to be incentivized to do it for you. And then when you're practicing your moves, you want to do them and get good reps. Don't settle for something that is a little bit sloppy or whatever. Go and do it all the way. A common theme of this video is just generally be a cool person and for the most part things will work out fine. But there are so many edge cases that you might be concerned about offending somebody in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. For example, what if someone has an extremely bad gi that smells terrible or they have long nails or some other hygiene thing and you sort of don't want to roll with them but they ask you to roll? How do you go about that? Well, I'm going to be honest, that's going to be an awkward situation no matter what. You can offer to give them a defense wipe if you have some of those in your gym bag or some nail clippers if they need to cut their nails. You can straight up ignore it and just deal with it. But in my opinion, it would probably be best to say, no thanks, I don't want to roll. You could come up with a white lie. Uh, you could tell them to their face that they smell and you don't want to roll with them because they smell. Honestly, that doesn't happen very often. For the most part, people are considerate and they're pretty clean. But it's going to depend on how disagreeable you are, whether or not you want to tell someone to their face they smell so bad that you don't want to roll with them. Sort of up to you. I mean, they might get a little bit offended. Other things when it comes to gym etiquette, bowing on and off the mats. This is something that not all gyms practice. For the most part, if you bow on and off the mats and you make it not a big deal, you don't like, you know, make a huge show out of it, um, but you're just light and respectful about it and you just do a little bow on and off. Even if you're at a gym that doesn't do that, it's going to be okay. No one's going to be like, what's this weirdo doing? Now, if you're at a gym where people bow all the time and everyone's bowing and then you just start running on and off the mats, people might look at you a little bit funny. So it's generally safer to watch what other people are doing. But if you don't know, giving a little bow on and off the mats is not the biggest deal in the world. The last thing that I'm going to touch on for etiquette in gyms is when to ask questions. Generally, there's going to be a time when the instructor is done showing moves that he'll ask if anyone has questions. Obviously, that's a good time to ask questions. The questions should be something related to what he just you know, showed. Questions in general could be done after class or before class, but during class, they're going to want you to ask questions that are related to the series or technique that you guys are working on. Don't ask questions that are, what if someone did something completely unrelated? Because if you really want to explore that, take a private lesson or talk after class or do some positional sparring during open mat. When you're in class, you're focusing on a specific subset of jujitsu. You're focusing on a specific series or move. So try to stay on topic and keep your questions. If you think it would benefit other people and you, go ahead and ask the question. If you think it wouldn't, go ahead and keep your mouth shut. Sometimes it's a good idea to flag a coach over when you're all practicing, but not every class you're going to be able to get one-on-one -on -one attention from the coach. Depending on how big the school is, there might be assistant instructors, you might be stuck with just figuring out between you and your sparring partner, but that's okay. I can't think of any more etiquette rules, and to be honest, I'm looking at that time. I think it's long enough to complete this YouTube video. So if I miss something and you think I should add it, go ahead and drop below in the comments. Also supports this channel quite a lot, and I would appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Drink kombucha. Have a great day. Peace.